President. Senator from Colorado. Mr. President, I'd ask unanimous consent that the call of the quorum be vitiated. Without objection. Mr. President, every year thousands of people travel to Colorado to enjoy some of the most exciting recreation opportunities in the world. Although my home state's known for its skiing, we're a summertime destination with four national parks, five national monuments, and 41 state parks for travelers to enjoy. Visitors can go whitewater rafting down the Colorado River or hike and climb in the magnificent Rockies. We have Wild West ghost towns, historic railroads, and American Indian cultural sites to visit. Now, obviously, uh, travel and tourism is an incredibly important sector of Colorado's economy. For every $1 million spent in Colorado by domestic and international travelers, 11 jobs are created. Travel and tourism alone generated $13.7 billion in revenue in 2007 in Colorado alone. And almost 150,000 Coloradans owe their jobs to that industry. And that's why, uh, Mr. President, today I rise to express my support for the Travel Promotion Act of 2009. I'm a proud uh, co-sponsor of this bill, which has strong support from members uh, across the aisle. And I do uh, look forward to voting for its passage later this week. While I've uh, listed uh, just the beginning of the numerous reasons to visit Colorado, the truth is that our tourism and travel industry has suffered in recent years. Uh, many people, Mr. President, don't realize it, but across our great country, uh, our tourism industry has never really fully recovered after September 11th, uh, particularly when it comes to travel from outside our country into the United States. And that compares with this fact. Travel around the world has dramatically increased in the past decade, while travel here to the United States has dropped. Uh, in 2008, we welcomed uh, fewer visitors to our own country than we did in the year 2000. Uh, why? Well, part of the uh, problem is that visitors from overseas have been confused uh, by the new procedures for entering our country. Uh, foreign visitors also say they don't think we're making much of an effort. Uh, to attract international travelers. And that's costing uh, communities across our country billions of dollars in lost revenue. In fact, one study suggested over $182 billion, uh, Mr. President, $182 billion uh, has been lost since September 11, 2001. In my state of Colorado, it, the industry, the travel and tourism industry, it's a strong economic engine, uh, and it's one that uh, we have to keep strong and we have to invest in. And a part of that's in changing the perception uh, that the U.S. isn't interested in hosting foreign tourists. And that's the point of this legislation. Uh, the legislation before us would help revive international travel to the United States so we can get that economic engine revved up to its full capacity. Now, the purpose of the bill is to sell travel in the United States to overseas tourists, including uh, areas that aren't well-known uh, destinations. Uh, of course, the presiding officer state is also a place we want to attract people to its wonderful beaches and the wonderful historical sites, uh, the great state of Delaware. But let me tell you uh, quickly some of the details in, in this legislation. It would uh, establish a corporation for travel promotion, which would be an independent nonprofit uh, corporation governed by an 11-member board that the Secretary of Commerce would appoint. It would create an office of travel promotion in the Department of Commerce to develop programs to increase the number of international visitors to the United States. And it would set up a travel promotion fund, which would be financed by public-private matching dollars. Uh, much of the cost would be borne by international travelers who'd pay a $10 fee collected through the electronic system for travel authorization. Mr. President, other countries are spending billions of dollars on travel promotions. And we all in the, this body think, uh, those of us who sponsor I've sponsored this legislation and, and I hopefully will vote for it uh, overwhelmingly at the end of this week, that we should stay competitive with other countries. So the Travel Promotion Act would directly contribute to the economic recovery of our travel and tourism industry. It would spur job growth and it would contribute to the tax base of uh, local and regional and, and state governments, many of which are being forced to make, uh, as we know all too well, drastic cuts uh, in this tough economic time. Mr. President, as well, before I close, I wanted to uh, mention that there are non-financial benefits to international 
travel as well. I, I want to quote that great American, uh, Mark Twain. Uh, he said that travel is fatal to prejudice, bigotry, and narrow-mindedness. Uh, America's image in the world, as we know, has suffered greatly over the past several years. But travel to our country, to America, is one of our most effective tools of public diplomacy. Studies have shown over and over again that when people come to our country, uh, they return home with a very positive view of not just uh, our country uh, as it's described in the books, but the landscapes and the people and the way we live our lives. Uh, so in addition to helping uh, strengthen our economy, this bill would strengthen our place uh, in the world. So let me end by uh, thanking and acknowledging uh, Chairman uh, of the Commerce Committee Rockefeller, Ranking Member Hutchison, and Senator Dorgan for quickly bringing this legislation to the floor. I look forward to the passage of the Travel Promotion Act so we can continue to get travel and tourism and, of course, then our economy uh, back on track. Mr. President, uh, with that, I'd ask that my statement be printed in the record in the appropriate place following the text of the bill. Objection. And uh, I would yield the floor.